Hey guys, we probably get a couple of calls a week of people asking us about left-handed violins. Do you guys sell left-handed electric violins? So I thought I'd do a really quick video with you guys to chat about are left-handed violins a thing? Yes, they are. Are they super common? No, they're not. And unless, and there's only a few reasons why you would really want a left-handed violin if you're a left-handed person. So um, first, um, one of the things that we'll see, people will ask this question because they'll see guys like Jimi Hendrix playing the guitar left-handed. That's why I wore the shirt today. Um, left-handed guitar players are fairly common. Left-handed guitars are fairly common. Violins, not so much. So I want to introduce you to my friend Akiba Wax. I'm going to let him play for you for a second, and then we're going to talk left-handed violins for just a few minutes, and then we'll get into the deets about uh, how we do left-handed electric violins if and when we do them, okay? talking about left-handed violins a little bit today and uh like you're probably the most well-known left viol left hand violinist i know so um i guess maybe talk about why you play left-handed versus just playing the way everybody else plays well so i am super left-handed so i can't even hold a spoon with my right hand or there won't be any food on it by the time it gets my mouth so <laughs> so i ended up uh, not being able to control a bow with my right hand so i had to flip it around and finding a teacher that's willing to teach left-handed is not easy and then finding an instrument that's left-handed is a lot harder right so, so you you started trying to play right-handed and end up having to, to switch yeah yeah and how so, old were you when you did that i was like 10 okay so then and, you uh, found a teacher willing to take a, a left-handed i violin. did I did, yeah. Crazy. And that was, like, the truth is, to teach left-handed is not difficult. You're just looking in the mirror. Right. It's not actually any more difficult, but people are, it's not traditional, so people don't want to deal with it. Violin <laughs> teacher's not known for being super open-minded. That's right. <laughs> so um, you played through school then, or just private lessons? So I was doing private lessons, and, and, uh, I was doing, I mean, I was doing mostly classical music then. And then I started getting into, you know, performing and the money is not in the classical scene. <clears throat> so Yeah, not so yeah. much. Right. So then I started having to open up into, you know, electric guitar is a real instrument, right? You know, that took some time, but until I had this, like, I was very close-minded. There was no way I was going to accept a electric guitar as a real instrument until I was... I played this wedding and with this guy who was playing electric guitar and I'm like, wow, that's really nice actually. Yeah. And like, I want to do that. So electric I was violin, actually, you mean, right? Yeah. Well, I'm saying he was playing electric guitar and oh, okay, I was yeah. like, well, I'm going to do that on electric, I'm going to do that on a violin. So I actually started with an acoustic violin and yeah, that didn't turn out so well. But <laughs> so have you ever played in an orchestra? I have not. I have played in quartet type situations never in an orchestra situation um again playing left-handed even playing in a band situation can be complicated left-handed right <clears throat> i have to be on the right side of the guitarist not on the left side of the guitarist and otherwise where uh, unless we have enough space then i guess it's not a problem but we don't right. always otherwise have that. you're you're hitting right we're hitting each other even though we're different heights you'd be surprised how high the guitar actually comes up <laughs> and how yeah. low you get down sometimes you know. So you've had to have all custom-made instruments then, right? That's right. So I first started on a right-handed instrument playing it backwards. Yeah, Hendrix style, yeah. Right. Um, there's a luthier in Chicago, actually, Peter Seaman, mm -hmm. who he, he's, he plays left-handed like that. Now, the problem is there are two issues, which I realized that if I hadn't switched, I would never be able to do what I do now, is mm -hmm. that when you have a left-handed when you don't have a left-handed violin, you're playing backwards. First of all, the E string doesn't, it's really hard to play lightly on a string that's so mm. far away. But then making extended range would be impossible. Right. 
because you'd be adding on the wrong side. So your eastern would be getting even further away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it wouldn't it would, be possible. It would be super hard to do. Extended and the range. viper would be totally impossible. Right. Because it's asymmetrical, there would be no possible way to play on a viper. Right. Yeah. That's. I mean, they would have to like totally rebuild the viper. So then I switched. I I got. I had. A, I went. I was. I grew up in Chicago, and then I was in New York for a few years. And my teacher in New York, I, um, I was recommended. Someone was recommended to me. I spoke to him, and I told him I'm left-handed. He's like, "Oh, I have somebody else for you." So he sent me to somebody who's like very, very good, who is left-handed, and plays backwards. He's like the only one. So anywhere I go in New York, they're like, "You're left-handed." Oh, you know this guy? <laughs> you know Sandy? I'm like, "Yeah, he was my teacher." <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, so he flipped me to playing on a left-handed violin. And so then after a couple of years, like he gave me his old his old violin that he had used. And then when I decided to go electric, it's like, wait, which electric is going to be able to be flipped? Right. So I ended up going with the YAV 105, mm -hmm. and Peter Seaman in Chicago flipped it for me. Okay. That was before I even like really knew electric violin shop, I think. Actually, I think I'd spoken to you guys once, but getting them to f getting it flipped is not easy. You have to. Right. They had to. They had to. Yamaha actually hired Peter Seaman to do it for me. Okay. For them, so it was a weird. So that's where I got that one, and then <clears throat> the Viper was the next one. And Eric Cito just built a father Lin for me, a six-string acoustic violin built backwards. Right. Also, so everything has to be custom made. There are a lot more expensive custom made, and it's. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's nice to play backwards for only one reason, and that's nobody ever has an excuse to try out your violin. Yeah, exactly. He's right about that. Like nobody's going to ever ask. To, they're never going to be able to borrow your violin if you're a lefty. So all that to say, most people who are left handed, they play right handed. So they play the, the violin with their left hand and the bow with their right hand. Because playing a violin, both hands sort of present their own challenges, right? I mean, there's a dexterity issue with your left hand that for us righties, you struggle a little bit to learn that dexterity. But the bow hand, because that's my strong hand, is going to be a little easier. For lefties, it's just the opposite. They, they've got plenty of dexterity in their strong hand, but they're going to struggle a little bit with a bow. So, you know, pick your poison, I guess. Orchestras. Playing backwards in an orchestra is a huge problem. It's going to be from a from a uh, visual standpoint and also from the fact that violins are going to be hitting each other. And violins, don't they don't really like their instruments to hit each other. So is it possible for you to play left-handed in an orchestra? I won't say it's impossible. They very, very, very strongly prefer all uh, right-handed players. So there are two reasons to play lefty. One is if you've got a physical limitation like Akiva, we've seen some people that were maybe missing fingers from an accident or there's a birth injury or something. There, there could be a reason where like physically it does not make sense for you to play a violin right-handed. The other reason is if you already play left-handed guitar and you've already basically figured out how to make your right hand do the fingering, like switching to play a violin, that's going to be really hard. So those are kind of the two biggest reasons to play lefty. Can we just restring a violin? We just take a violin, just string it backwards. Well, it's a good thought, but it turns out that violins are not symmetrical on the inside. So there's a bass bar on one side, the sound post is on the other side. The instrument looks symmetrical from the outside. It is absolutely not symmetrical on the inside. So just restringing the violin uh, is problematic. You basically have to have an acoustic violin that is built backwards in order to have it work right when you string it backwards. So wouldn't solid body violins be more symmetrical, at least some of them? Well, yes, the bodies, there are some bodies that are very symmetrical. What's not symmetrical is the scroll, the nut, the bridge, and the chin rest. So if we're going to convert one, we have to keep all of those things in mind. And uh, I've got a little video for you guys that we just did about pegs that's going to give you a heads up on what the situation is with flipping a violin from right-handed to left-handed from a standpoint of the scroll of the instrument. There's two problems, and, and this is just a peg box. This is We're assuming that the electric instrument is essentially um, symmetrical. There's kind of a problem with the peg box. I'm grabbing a five string instrument, but you can see I've got a peg box here and then I've got one that's reversed. Remember which one is the right-handed violin? The right-handed violin is the picture on the left where that 
first peg, the E peg, is up higher. And the reason is, in first position, your finger needs to occupy that space. If I'm playing, uh, you know, uh, F natural on the E string, look how far back my finger is. It's actually occupying the space where that peg would be if the pegs were switched. So if I'm playing left-handed, I can't even hardly think about this, but when I'm trying to get my finger in position, it's gonna hit that peg, it's gonna be in the way. So in order to do a left-hand conversion, we have to swap those pegs around facing the other way. Remember when we said that these are tapered pegs going into tapered holes? Right, the problem is, so if I wanna switch that peg going the other way, I now have a small hole where I need a big hole, and I have a big hole where I need a small hole. So I've got a hole that's reamed out like this. I really need it to be reamed out like this. And you can look, well, I can't add wood where there isn't any there. All I can do is take wood away where there is. So where you can see where the hole on the, uh, the right-hand side of your screen is too small, I've actually got to ream all that out. And I'm going to need a much larger peg to fill that space. Fortunately, geared pegs come in different sizes, so we can actually do that. We'll just upsize the pegs. What it means is you can't ever go back. All right, so if we are gonna convert an instrument, we, we're gonna have to change the pegs out for you, and then what are the good candidates for that? We're gonna need a fairly symmetrical body, and we're gonna have to change the chin rest from a left-handed chin rest to a right, from a right-handed chin rest to a left-handed chin rest. So what are some good conversions, uh, some good uh, candidates? If we look at these instruments uh, over here, you look at the uh, wood violins uh, Stingray, you look at the bridge violin, some Stratton violins, some Zeta violins are very symmetrical. The bodies are very symmetrical. So that when you come up the neck, you're gonna have about, or you're not gonna have about there. Um, and then they are interchangeable chin rests. On the Stingray, they actually screw the chin rest into the body. So we would have to get a left-handed chin rest, drill some holes and screw it into the body. Not that big a deal, it's just a piece of wood. But um, it's, these are some instruments where it is gonna be relatively easy to convert these instruments. These instruments, the GEVA, the YEV, um, the Aurora, which actually does look a little more symmetrical, but uh, changing that chin rest out is a little more problematic just to due to the design of the instrument. Um, the Cantini, um, the Aurora Oro, those are like kind of symmetrical, but you'll notice most of them have a bout on the one side where the instrument's gonna be. So you're gonna have to deal with the fact that your YEV has a bout, but it's on the wrong side of the instrument. So that bout is not going to help you the way it would a right-handed player. So those are a little more challenging. These instruments, which are asymmetrical, or have a chin rest that is um, attached to the instrument in such a way that you can't take it out. Like the, uh, the Yamaha instrument there, that chin rest is molded into the body. You can't change that. Um, these are instruments that cannot be converted to left hand. So it turns out that Glasser actually makes a, a left-handed acoustic electric instrument. We've actually got one in stock. It's right here. And there's a picture of it there. So you can see that, um, like if I tried to play this right-handed, the chin rest is on the wrong side. And you would see that the peg, my peg, my finger is going to hit here. So this is truly a left-handed violin. The bass bar and the sound post are on the opposite side of the instrument. It is strung backwards. Um, so we, we can get Glasser left-handed acoustic electric violins. And then the other ones, we can, some of those we can convert. Now there's going to be a bit of a substantial cost on that because we've got a fair amount of work to do. We've gonna have to, to rebuild the nut on the low side and recut it. We're gonna have to switch the pegs around. We're gonna have to switch the chin rest around, switch the, uh, the strings around. Anyway, so some of those instruments that we said are good candidates and that are sort of medium level candidates, um, we can convert those for you for a fee. Um, but all that to say, I would suggest if you don't have to play left-handed, if you don't already play left-handed, if you're learning, um, go right-handed if you can. There are so many more options for you as far as instruments. Uh, the instruments that you do buy are going to be much less expensive. Uh, but if you are a left-handed player, we are here to serve you. I just want you to be aware of these are sort of the challenges associated with being a left-handed player. Okay, thanks so much. and We'll see you next time.